Welcome to the Harley Street Heart and Vascular Center. I will be your host. My name is Dr. Rohit Karana and I'm one of the cardiologists based at this clinic. Welcome to the Interventional Case Corner, the series. Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Rohit Karana and a uh, warm welcome to those listening uh, for what I'm going to start a series of presentations on my practice at Harley Street Heart and Vascular Centre, which is based at Glen Eagles Hospital in Singapore. So I'm going to present um, a, a series of cases, and today, my first case, I'm going to first summarise in the following slide. Uh, this was a 56-year-old gentleman who was referred to my care from his primary physician. And this gentleman had a very important and strong family history of early onset ischemic heart disease, meaning coronary blockages. His mother succumbed to a fatal heart attack when she was 62 years old, and his father underwent coronary artery bypass surgery in his late 60s. So his GP had the, um, the sense to screen this gentleman for coronary disease with a view to understanding his heart attack risk. And she performed a cardiac CT, which is a non-invasive assessment of the coronary arteries to look to see whether there were any coronary blockages. And this revealed a calcium score of 188. Calcium is a marker of plaque deposits in the artery and 188 is a moderately high score. More importantly, there was a moderately severe blockage described by the radiologist in the mid-segment of the main artery of the heart called the left anterior descending artery. This gentleman also had other risk factors, namely hypertension. He was an ex-smoker, having stopped in 2002, admittedly many years ago, and he also had a history of high cholesterol. So he underwent a treadmill test in my clinic, and this was positive, meaning that there was a suggestion that when his heart was going at a high heart rate, um, the ECG changes during the running test, during the treadmill test, was suggestive of there being a high-grade blockage, which is, of course, consistent with what the CT scan showed. So with evidence both on imaging, the CT scan, and a functional test, where his heart was assessed by, by treadmill testing, we had very good evidence to further understand this gentleman's coronary anatomy. And that's when I took him to the procedure room in the hospital to do what's called a coronary angiogram. You can see on the left-hand slide um, the injection of dye um, into his arteries, which generates the picture of his main artery, which the CT scan reported as there having been a blockage. And where my arrows are highlighted on the left-hand picture is where the severe blockage is located. Now, this is um, a complex blockage in the sense that the main artery certainly has a very tight blockage, which um, I reported to be around 80 to 90 percent, but complex in the sense that it also involves a bifurcation, meaning, meaning a major branch artery from within the blockage is also arising, which itself has some mild disease, about 20 to 30 percent. What I'd like to move on to in this discussion is actually a very important tool that interventional cardiologists have come to rely on to optimise and to gain the best possible procedural outcome for the patients, and we use intravascular imaging. Now, an important modality is called optical coherence tomography, or OCT for short. And OCT has evolved over the last decade as an increasingly important tool for interventional cardiologists to guide what's happening inside the artery. Um, sometimes we use it when we are understanding a little bit more about the characteristics, the morphology of what comprises the blockage, but also once the stent has been placed to make sure that the stent has been properly deployed, properly expanded inside the artery so that the stent um, is maximally expanded and the stents um, are comprised of a, a series of struts 
and these struts are properly opposed to the vessel wall. So it uses infrared imaging which provides very high definition resolution of within inside the artery to allow high precision um, determination of these lesion characteristics, the plaque morphology um, in defining what should be the best approach for intervention in a particular blockage. And then once the artery has been assessed, as I mentioned, it helped guide stent placement and even stent deployment and understanding how the stent looks afterwards. So what you see on this picture are these images of what we as interventional cardiologists see. So I tell the patient we can take pictures using a, a very sophisticated, very high resolution camera. And what you see on this picture is the, the black uh, represents the inside of the artery, which normally contains blood, but of course as part of the imaging um, it has to be cleared and that's used as part of a procedural um, technique during the imaging process. And then you can see a very, very bright orange fluorescent uh, circle, and that is the, the wall of the vessel. And the wall of the vessel has very, very discrete layers called the adventitia, the media, and the intima. And when the stent is deployed, it's actually deployed so that the edge of the stent is adjacent and fixed to the intima uh, within the vessel wall. So the purpose of this picture is just to show you what beautiful, very high resolution images we can get today of dealing with our um, stenting procedures as we're going through them. So as I mentioned, um, imaging has been around for 10 years um, in terms of OCT, about 20 years for ultrasound. And what you can see on the left hand side is a picture of the ultrasound image and a picture on the right hand side is the OCT image. And both modalities have their role to play and um, different operators um, have different uses for each of these imaging modalities, but ultimately to guide the best procedural outcome for our patients. And this um, imaging tool has been given a Class 2A recommendation in the international guidelines which influence um, interventional practice, which means that it's recommended. And the level of evidence is B, which means that there's a significant body of evidence. Now, what you can see on this slide is that I placed a stent uh, within his main artery at the point where it was just crossing the junction of the branch. And what you can see is actually the stent deployed. You can see the, the scaffold struts, uh, which uh, shows that it's very well expanded. And then um, as the imaging uh, pulls further back within the artery, you can see a very important issue, which in this case influenced my subsequent management. Now, at this point here, where there's a blue line crossing the cross-section of the artery. You can see in the top right image um, at the 11 o'clock position there is what we call a dissection which really means that there is a tear within the artery wall. Now that's not something that you can see by the angiogram which is the dye-based um, visualization of the artery. It takes something as important as intravascular imaging to see this type of um, procedural complication or procedural issue um, and so as a consequence of seeing this dissection or this tear, this led me to place a second stent um, inside the artery. So just to give um, the audience a little bit further information on what a dissection is, if you can see at the left hand side of this slide, there is a small flap in the roof of the artery and that is not normal and that is what we call a dissection. And so after seeing the dissection, I went on to place a second stent inside the artery, which essentially closed the flap, closed the dissection. And so in the, in the end, this gentleman needed two stents to optimise his procedural outcome. And this is, in my mind, a very good example to share with you just how intravascular imaging pretty much influences, and in this case, optimises our procedural outcome. And that's um, my closing slide, which is a slide I've already shown you, which is the slide of the final stent um, appearance of this gentleman's procedure, where he had two um, 
uh, adjacent stents in the main artery and then where you can see the branch artery he also ended up having a third stent um, in this complex bifurcation lesion which was made um, all the more um, optimised by intravascular imaging um, using optical coherence tomography. So with that, thank you for your attention. Thank you.